<laughs> Mitch, That's right. Mitch, hit me, hit me with a one-liner, right? What? She's, she's. <laughs> you gotta have something. Oh man, it'll come up. Uh, you know, we'll just let it ride out. We'll and I'll just throw out. one in there when the time yeah. is right. Uh, but we got Brianne Zolfo. That's how you say it, yep. right? I've been that saying is, it that way yeah. for years. Yeah. So okay, um, I hope it's right. Um, the owner of Cafe Fresco yep. and Community Love, yep. which is your nonprofit, yep. and um, Bree, we've been friends for a while. How long have we been friends? How long have I been tormenting like you in your cafe? Eight years, right? <laughs> yeah, it's been a well. I, we've been. Let's see. I've been in real estate now for about eight, seven, eight years. So yeah. yeah, probably about six or seven years. Yeah. But I've been tormenting you in your cafe for that whole time. I always forget the pandemic was two years. So I have to add two years on any time frame that I'm thinking about. <laughs> those were, those were dog years. Just yeah. a blur. Yeah. Cause and then I'm like, okay, out. then Alex and I have been friends a long time cause the pandemic added two years. So mm. here we are. And I basically yeah. would just come to your cafe and bother you yeah. and Candace. Yep. Which, um, I haven't seen Candace in forever, but. Oh, her business is flourishing. Awesome. Is she? Yeah. That's amazing. She's Shout out to awesome. Candace. Yeah. Um, Candace. Candace. Candice. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. thank you for coming in. We figured this would be a good time to talk about. Um, yeah. Just share your story. And, and again, we just like to meet with really cool people in the region doing great stuff for the community. Yeah. And that's it. Um, we like to share stories about what's going on, people who are making the community a better place. And you do that in multiple facets, right? So with, let's start first with... Um, uh, just a little background on you. You're from Crown Point originally, right? Born and raised. Yeah. Born and raised. And not only that, and not only that, you live in the house you grew up in. Yep. Yeah. How cool is that? Cool. Like bought it the is house. Awesome. Yes. It's like so you don't live great. with your parents anymore. It's no. your house. <laughs> <laughs> I bought my house. That's yes. so cool. That's yes, so cool. It's awesome. And it's like I a, love like Crown Point. Everything about Crown Point, I love it. Like my brothers, like moved out right away when they graduated college, and I could mm-hmm. not be more obsessed with Crown Point. It's, it's so great. It is awesome. After your stint in Lowell. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. God's two years. <laughs> two, two year stint. I'm oh. telling you, Crown Point is so great. It is awesome. Everything's here. It's so wonderful. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you ever want to leave here? I, know. I don't know. It is awesome. It's The only reason is these polar vortexes. Outside mm-hmm. of that. You would want to leave because winter comes? Some people don't. I'm saying that's why some people leave. I'm not, I, I love I, the four seasons, though. The, the winter, summer, like... Everywhere else only has a couple seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're this, you get about... to experience everything. Yeah. Have you ever heard Daniel Tosh talk about this? You guys know Daniel Tosh? Daniel yeah. Tosh, one of the funniest comedians ever. He goes, he, he always talks about that. He goes, uh, or he has this bit where he's like, I talk to Midwesterners and they're like, I like the seasons. I like to live somewhere with seasons. And then, and then he goes, it's yeah, so that's wonderful. why I live in a place that skips a shitty once. <laughs> <laughs> See, no. I like I do like the four it seasons. It makes too, you appreciate here. the summer when you have the winter. You. you know, it's look at that. Pushback. It's, it's like true. you can't you can't enjoy the victories yeah. without yep. the failures. Yep. You know what I mean? Amen. If you live in a place that's warm all the time, Amen. it's not that cool. Yep. You know. Yeah. Plus, when it's cold out here and it starts snowing and you're looking at the courthouse, it's so great. It's like yeah. especially from the yeah. cafe, right? It's so perfect. So when did the cafe? That's a good segue. When did the cafe start? And how did this, when did you get the motivation to be like, I want to own a cafe? Never. (laughs) That was never my goal, which is crazy because I never like dreamed about it. I never like thought about it as a child, like nothing. Mm -hmm. It was never like. What, what kind of things like did you dream about as a kid? Like what were you into in high school? Well, so my sixth grade paper, I said that I wanted to teach English in China. (laughs) Man. And that was my whole entire wow. goal, like most that of is my so life, cool. was I was going to move to China and I was going to teach English. Wow. I never like wanted to own my own business. I never wanted to anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then you how? still don't speak English. In China. <laughs> you dropped the ball on that. Yeah, you I still can... don't speak English. In China. I China. speak very well. You thank them. you. <laughs> <laughs> I no, speak is great. Uh, <laughs> you you could do like I know some people. I have a friend who lives in Bloomington who teaches like French and English to to kids in France yeah. and kids in China through yeah. Zoom. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, like you have all the time on your hands to do that. Exactly. So well, so when I first. Are we rewinding all the way to the beginning? Because I'm going to tell you about my English. I thought you were going to tell us about your birth for a second. <laughs> all, the well, all the way to the beginning. That's all the way to the beginning. I was like, well, well this is interesting. And a good day in Crown Point. Oh, so how did it, how did that happen? Like the uh, not the, the birth. The, Jesus, Mitch. The <laughs> the the English thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Well, I saw the look on her face. I'm She's like, like Do you so. want? I'm just Saint Anthony's Hospital. <laughs> let's 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 go back here. The English. Okay. 
So I started teaching English at the English school that was across the street from the fairgrounds in Crown Point. Mm -hmm. And I taught there for three years. And then when I bought the building where the cafe is now, I opened up an English school in the back room. Hmm. So I had my own English school for four years in the back of the room. And I taught people from mainly from Macedonia and Serbia, but I had people from Mexico and um, Italy and everywhere across the country. I had that school for four years. And then once they graduated the school, they got to work at the cafe. That is awesome. So, yeah, I did not I had know the that English school. Yeah. So you so you bought the cafe and it was a it was a cafe at the time, right? No, no, no. It was oh, okay. a cash for gold. Cash for yeah, gold. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so then you converted it from a cash for gold into a cafe. So he was in the front and I was in the back doing the English. Yeah. Okay. So I had the English school, which was called the language room, and so I had that for four years teaching English as a second language. That is super yeah. cool. My wife did ESL. I don't know if I you loved talk. it. Yeah, she, yeah. for so Winfield I talked about it before. Yeah, yeah. 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 I uh, loved it. That's awesome. And it's just so rewarding because it was mostly adults. And so to see adults who have come here from different countries mm -hmm. to like, they have to learn English because they don't want to rely on their children. Yep. And so I feel like it was such a drive and like motivation to learn English because they don't want to have to rely on their children all their lives to translate mm -hmm. for them. Yep. And so, Jeez. yeah. My mother and father-in-law like that. They Spanish was their was their only language, yeah. and they like they. My father-in-law's gotten good at it through his work, and he's contractor stuff like that. And my mother-in-law like same thing. Like they, she's not as good as he is, but yeah. same thing. Like her, my you know, Saida had to like, and her sister had to like help with yeah, them, and everything. still at times help. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's super cool. So, yeah. how long did you do the the what was it? What was the, the business room. called? The language room. The language room. How yeah. long did you have that? So I had that for four years. Dang. Yeah. Before the cafe started? No, during. Oh, during. Yeah. Okay. So you were doing both at the same time? Yeah, it was crazy. So That's you kind of awesome. came into like entrepreneurship through like philanthropy and like helping others. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's so like a unique entrance. Into it was that. crazy because I started volunteering at the one across from the fairgrounds and I was volunteering there for a year before they asked me if I wanted an actual position there. And so then I started working there. And then after I bought the building, I opened up my own and... Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. So, yeah. so then the, so then, uh, Cafe Fresco was. Up, then, how, if you said you didn't want to own a cafe, how did that happen? So I bought the building mm -hmm. in two thousand and twelve or eleven. Yeah. I don't remember. It was October fifth. I know that. Uh, me, October fifth. My daughter's birthday is October fourth. Really? And mine's the first. Yeah. So, so October fifth was the sheriff's sale at the Lake County Government Center. And so that building went to the sheriff's sale. Huh. And then I went to the sheriff's sale. I was the only one that showed up. And they said, now bidding on one North Court. And I won it. One that North Court. Awesome. So cool. And I was like 20 or 21 I was when I say, bought how the building. Old were you? Yeah. I Dang. think I was 21. That's but my so parents cool. didn't think I would win it because they're like, everyone's going to show up at the auction. Like, it's a prime location. It was just remodeled because it had a fire in there. So they're like, everyone's going to be there. And so then I went to the auction. They're like, okay, you won it. And wow. I call my dad. I'm like, Dad, guess what? I won the building. No. And he's like, seriously? I'm like, yeah, I was the only one that showed up. <laughs> Nobody else showed up to the auction. Did, did you know Jeez. those Lake County Sheriff's sales now have two, three, four hundred bidders at them at every single oh, one? Oh, there was nobody. Nobody. That is nuts. That's like an act of God. That speaks a lot. That speaks a lot on how much the region and Crown Point has changed. Because is that now, crazy? Yeah. Now anything like that, pff, yeah. there would be hundreds of people going after that. A property like that yeah nobody that is definitely nobody. a godly type of a situation it was wow. crazy so then the then um so then the cafe opened up and no no, no then so the i bought the building no room. all i was gonna do was have the building and just mm -hmm. rent it out and that was the end of my story because mm -hmm. i was still working at the other english school yeah. mm -hmm. so i was just gonna have the building and love my life mm -hmm. and then i went on vacation to sarasota florida and this guy was retiring and selling his whole cafe so then i bought all the equipment, all the counters, sinks, electrical, everything. I shipped it up to Crown Point. And I was just going to sell the equipment. I was not going to open a cafe. I was not going <laughs> to open again. a business. <laughs> wrong. And Mama's wrong again. Then I, my tenant moved out in May. And then in June, I opened Cafe Fresco. Of 2012? 2013. 2013. 
Dang. And so I had a month because I wanted to open in the summer. So he moved out May 30th and I opened June 26th and I hit the ground running, tearing up the floor, tearing up the ceiling, finishing everything. And June so 26th, cool. we opened. So cool. It was madness. And so, you also opened up Community Love at the same time. Yeah. So then I started um, my nonprofit Community Love and opened my English school in the back room of the cafe and yeah what do you love most about running the cafe the people i absolutely if i could be a door greeter at the cafe (laughs) i would be the best door greeter ever because my customers are the absolute best like if you just sit me at the front window and i just door greet all day that'd be so great a a cafe is like one of the coolest things i feel like to own outside i don't know the business side i'm just saying in general yeah. Like, you're getting people who are getting warm cups of coffee. Yeah, and everyone's tea. so happy. Yeah. All the time. Yes. Like, the, but also it's just a place to, like, enjoy people. Yeah. To, com- to, like, to talk, to yeah. love on people. Yeah. And, like, and you've done that. It's so cool because, I mean, that's how we met. I was just yeah. coming and getting yeah. coffee. Yeah. And then we'd start talking. And, and next thing you know, you're meeting amazing people. Yeah. You're meeting people who do such cool things, people from other parts of the region or other parts yeah. of Crown Point, and you start to meet all these interesting, amazing people. And you're 100% right. Like, the people who go to Cafe Fresco are just awesome. Yeah. You're there and you're like, these people are just amazing. And It's exactly like cheers. Like, everyone says <laughs> that who comes in is like, crazy. you just meet each other. Because I always want all the customers to know each other. Mm-hmm. So I'll be like, Alex, this is Jonathan. Jonathan, yes. this is you Alex. You do do so a that- great job of that. Yes, because I want sure. everyone to be like friendly and friends, and so like I'm always introducing everyone, like if as you, awkward as it is. No, if you didn't do that though, yeah. Cafe Fresco wouldn't be what it is. Yeah, because that happens so. all the time. You're like, yeah. have you met? I, yeah, like, I know. I'm it's so that weird. question yeah. of have you met? <laughs> I've know. heard you say that hundreds of. Have I you met? always I'm do like, that. No, I haven't. What's up? I never you know? like put the thought behind like why you do that. Another thing that adds to, like a the lot character in the environment <laughs> is the just the. Uh, on the sleeves. Yeah, yeah. on the sleeves. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so that started. So I opened the cafe in June. And so the following January, which I was only six months open, this crazy like state of emergency happened with the snow. And so the square was shut down because there was a state of emergency. You're only allowed to leave your house if I don't know what they would let you leave your house for. But it was so bad. And so that month, I only made $900 the whole entire month. Wow. And so I was like, we got to close. It's been six months. We're good. That's enough time for me. <laughs> like, we got to close. But so we would sit in the cafe every day with sometimes one customer coming in, two all customers all day because this, it was a state of emergency. So you couldn't leave your house because of the snow. And so I was like, you know, we're just going to write on these sleeves. Like, we have nothing else to do. Like, we might as well just sit here. We're Like, me and my employees would sit there for 12 hours with one customer coming in the whole day. So we just write sleeves all day. So then I remember the following week when, like, the square was open again. One of my customers comes in, and he's like, Brian, my sleeve didn't have any, like, inspirational quote on it. And I was like, no, no, that was just last week because, like, it was a state of emergency and, like, blah, blah, blah. But then I realized, like, how many people, like, appreciated and, like, how much it meant to them, all the inspirational quotes that we had been writing. And so I was like, this thing that started out of boredom has become, like, something that people really appreciate. It's a staple. 100%. And so, like, it just became a thing. And so now we've done it ever since. And, yeah. It's so cool. And that was one of the first things uh, that I loved the most because, like, that resonated a lot with our brand because we spent a lot of time, like – reading books, listening to this podcast. Yeah. We spent a lot of time on personal development. Yeah. And so when I first started coming in, stuck out to me to the point where I was like, Brie, can I buy the next yeah, the X sleeves. thousand sleeves? Yeah. Yeah. And that was really cool because yeah. um, just because it, it it just matched so well with like, I don't know, I, it, when someone gets a warm cup of coffee yeah. and on it is something that just something, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's just so cool. And so from there then, uh, you started to get, when did you start to get like, outside media attention and like what was that like weren't you on steve harvey's show yeah, steve harvey, and like cbs, new, CBS york, yeah. new york like how did that all come about so we um i don't know how it began but we started getting like recognition locally in like all the papers and so um for the I, sleeves or for yeah the, for the coffee sleeves the coffee sleeves yeah. and for the uh the tips too right yeah like you were taking chart, tips yep. and you were donating, and donating the them, tip yep. line mm-hmm. yep 
Um, so we started getting a lot of attention locally on that in the Post Tribune and the Times. And then um, uh, they called me from CBS New York and it was on my birthday. And at first I was super skeptical because I was like, there's no way that CBS New York is calling. Like, and it was on my birthday, January 3rd. I was leaving Toast and Jam in Cherville and they called me and they're like, hi, this is from CBS New York. Um, we wanted to fly out and film your cafe. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Like <laughs> CBS New York is calling me. And so then um, they flew out on January 21st of that year and filmed for, I think it was 12 hours. And wow. then from there, Steve Harvey show called me and did a segment on the cafe, and yeah. Did you get to meet Steve? No. Ah, dang. What a guy. Still yeah. incredibly S cool. Still very cool, very cool. Yeah, um, so then a bunch of letters started coming in all the time, all the time from all over the country of wow. people saying like how moved they were by my story. Um, yeah, can yeah. you talk about that a little bit, because that is one thing that's so cool, is you, you said you've gotten letters from how many countries and how many states? Didn't oh, you? tons and tons. Almost every single state I've gotten a letter from. Yeah, I think I remember once I thought you said 48. There's only two states you didn't get a letter from, yeah. from somebody. Like, which says how many people, like, who knows how many yeah. people from every, from all those states. But like, and then yeah. how many different countries? Didn't different countries send yeah, you Yeah, it was too? all over. Like, different countries saw the episode because wow. it, like, aired nationally. And so people from, like, all over the whole world were sending letters and people were sending checks and, like, here, this is to help your cause. And before the pandemic, which is one of the things that's in the um, segment of CBS New York, was we went to Aldi's because every month we would go to Aldi's before the pandemic and we would pay for people's groceries. And they would say, like, who are you? Who, where are you from? I'm like, I don't know. Because I never wanted to come back as, yeah. like, mm -hmm. I don't want people to know who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to do it as, like, a super undercover, like, fun thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, I went to Costco, like, two months ago, and this guy came up to me, and he's like, you probably don't remember me, but you paid for my groceries two years ago. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. That's I was cool. like, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. That's really cool. So yeah. then Community Love Now, what what are what's the mission with Community Love? What are you trying to do? And, like, what are some of the things that your nonprofit does for the community? So the nice thing about our nonprofit is we can help anyone with anything. So we're not like specific to like a certain like demographic of people. Like mm -hmm. we don't just work with kids or just work with adults and we don't just collect like shoes or something. Mm -hmm. We can do everything. And so the nice thing is we built partnerships with all the schools in Crown Point where they'll call us and be like, hey, we have a family that needs shoes. Um, that's what it was last week. Or like, hey, we have a family that needs jackets. And so it's nice because whatever the need is, we can always fulfill it because we work with everyone. So it's wow. not like a specific thing Smart. that um, we had a family last week because we did the Thanksgiving where we make hot Thanksgiving meals for all the families at the schools nominate. So then Thursday morning on Thanksgiving, we have volunteers and they bring all the um, hot food that's made to all the families. Because I always say like, if you're in an unfortunate situation and you have to have the stress of like preparing food on the morning of Thanksgiving, like let us alleviate like at least some of the stress of doing something, you know, mm -hmm. like if you're in a bad situation, whether it's like you don't have a lot of money or you're in like an abusive relationship, like let us take the stress out of something for you in your life. And so that is like making the hot food on Thursday morning. And like all the volunteers that come out, I'm like, you guys are sacrificing your Thanksgiving, you know, like I'm sure you have stuff to do on Thanksgiving, but you're sacrificing that day to like give back to all these people that are in unfortunate mm -hmm. situations. And so like that's something cool is to see like all the people that rally together for like any event that we have, because it's usually like around Christmas time, around Thanksgiving time mm -hmm. in the summer when families have stuff going on and like all these people volunteer, like regardless of what they're doing, because they see the greater good of like what it's gonna go to so it's just a group it's just community love right yeah. there literally yeah. i mean that, that yeah. like that just makes sense it's like you got the community just loving on other people yeah. in the community um yeah. how is it that um that people can help with community love is it just donations is it like how, how does somebody who says hey i'm listening to what you're doing i love what you're doing yeah how do we help so i'd say the most need we have right now is volunteers like we always need volunteers because the 
families that we're helping usually outnumber the amount of volunteers that we have. So the more volunteers we have, um, the more like people we can help and the more impact we can have, which is great because the school sometimes in a week will give us like 10 families that need help with something. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need and more so, people to help with that. Yeah, the more volunteers we can have like packing things mm-hmm. or like it was a lot of, for the families back to school, was a lot of families that needed like clothes for school or they needed like school supplies. And so the teachers or principals or employees at the schools would reach out and say, hey, Brianne, there's this family. And so like to have more hands on deck of like, people that can deliver to the families or people that can go shopping or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So sweet. Yeah. And if somebody wanted to donate with just funds, yeah. uh, how do they do that? On our website, there's a link for donations. Cool. Um, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a link on there that tells about community love, how it got started. And there's a donation link on there. And we try to post, we have a Facebook group for community love. And so we post like what the needs are, or Mm -hmm. um, if we have a surplus of something like two months ago, we posted like all the surpluses we have because there's a lot of huge organizations that'll donate. Um, Target is one of our donors or Turtle Fur who donates all the winter stuff. Um, There's a lot of big organizations that donate a ton of stuff. And so we're able to help a lot of people because we have a lot of resources. So cool. So. My wife always talks about this, and um, which is the thing that a lot of times people always look like. People always think that there's problems. That go, everyone knows there's problems that go on in the world. Yeah. But to to people who are hungry, to the abusive side, to the lack of resources, yeah. to whatever it is, and people are constantly looking to say, "Well, I want to help in Africa," just as example. Yeah, yeah. Which again, there's a need. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. But my wife always shares with me that. And made me realize that there's things like this that are happening down the street. Yeah, yeah. And what you guys are doing is so cool because it's not, it's it's we want to help right here where we live because there's yeah. kids that need our help, there's yeah. families that need our need our help, and I love that because it's people here helping people here. It's well, and so that's cool. what's great, and like that's what community love is all about is like helping people within your community. And when I talk about like there's over 600 children in Crown Point, Indiana that don't eat on the weekends. And so how is that happening in Crown Point, Indiana, when we have resources, we have people that can help, we have people that can, like, like use their power for good, you know? Like, how is there 600 children in Crown Point that don't eat on the weekends? How? Oh. It's, like, mind-boggling. And so, like, if we all used our resources and our power, like, if you're a business owner and you have, like, power to make an impact on somebody you should use that power for good of like, there should not be 600 children that aren't eating on the weekends. You know, that's so crazy. And like, what little part can you play? Like one of my customers said, if everyone gathered one bag of groceries from their pantry, we could all feed the children every single weekend. So there would never be a weekend that they wouldn't have food. If you just get one paper bag of the extra groceries that you have in your pantry, that's the end, you know? That does it. That's That's awesome. it. Yeah. Yeah, and you're right, because you don't think about, and that's exactly the point that my wife used to make. She's like, you don't think that in an area like this where you have these Everyone amazing schools that. and this great Everyone neighborhood and that. all of these amazing yeah. things going on and this development and these, new, these yeah. great businesses and wealthy yeah. and all this stuff, you yeah. don't think that there's 600 kids in Crown Point, Indiana that go home and don't yeah. have food. My wife told a story once when she, she worked at a charter school in Indianapolis for, uh, for a while, and she shared with me a story how uh, the school that she was at, I think it was kindergarten to second grade. Okay, so these are four-year-olds to like eight-year-olds, right? And um, one time during the during winter break, the school got broken into, and they found out it was some of the students. Yeah. And the only thing that they stole was food. Food, yeah. And it's crazy yeah. when you think about that because you think about Indianapolis and you think about a nice place. Yeah. And um, but the kids literally were just hungry. Yeah. I mean, imagine being eight and yeah. thinking, I need to go break into my school for food. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, well, I, and kids I, shouldn't have to stress out about that. That's exactly. what gets me every time is like kids should worry about like what shoes they're going to wear on the playground. They shouldn't be worrying about how they're going to eat, where they're going to eat, if they're going to eat. Like that should never, ever cross their child minds. You know, that's crazy. 100%. It's so crazy. Yeah. And like, that's why I'll preach it to the top of my like mountain is like, all the ways that we help Crown Point is like everyone needs to be made aware of this. 
everyone needs to be made aware that not all kids have shoes to go to school. Not all kids have food every weekend. Not all kids have clothes. And so if you can donate like extra clothes you have, extra shoes you have, extra food you have, like anything extra, like there's people that want that as the bare minimum and they're just extra things to you, Mm -hmm. you know? Like you have tons of clothes, I'm sure, in your closet that you never wear, you know? That like a family would love to wear, Mm -hmm. you know? But you just have like a surplus and we don't think about it unless like those situations are readily presented to us of like all the surplus we have would be someone's like bare minimum, Mm -hmm. you know? So there's three things that people can do. One is they can donate money at the website, bottom of the website. Two is donate their time. Time which is huge so and volunteers. Yeah. And I say like th- when we did the Thanksgiving event, like bring your children because like at a young age, they need to be made aware mm-hmm. of like things that are happening in their own community. And it starts with young, you know, Amen. like especially all of us that live like a good life and we have the things that we have is like you need to expose your children to things that are happening in their own community because children will be the ones that will change the community that they live in, you know? And it's the parents' responsibility to teach their children that, you know? And that that goes to, you know, kids go back to school after Christmas and they talk about how Santa got them an iPad. Yeah. Yeah. But Santa didn't show up for this family. And just as simple as having those kids come to, to, when when that kid who didn't get anything from Santa asked for whatever and couldn't, and Santa didn't come this year. Yeah. That's a real conversation that parents have with kids. Yeah. And when kids go back to school and their nine-year-old classmate just got an, an iPhone. Yeah. Like that's so, but when kids start to see these types of things and be around these types of things, they can empathize with the fact yeah. that while wow, I am lucky for the situation yeah. that I might be yeah. in. And like, I love what you said. Kids are the ones that change the community because they grow up in the community. They are. Yeah. It's so cool. And I always think about that. Like my dad would take us to the homeless shelter when we were younger and we were Mm -hmm. constantly exposed to people from other situations, other demographics. And I was just talking about my parents about this last week when we were doing the Thanksgiving event. I was like, thank you for always exposing me to different situations because I grew up to understand that there are people that don't live like me because we were constantly exposed to that. We would do all the Thanksgiving, all the Easter. My parents would buy groceries when we went to the grocery store. We would go to the homeless shelter. We would buy shoes for kids. And I'm like, thank you for always exposing me to that, you know, because it's kids that are young that are exposed to that, like me and my brothers were, that are going to change the world because Mm -hmm. of what we saw when we were growing up, you know? And and that was going to be a question I was going to ask you was where this came from. But it came, your parents exposed you to this at a young age. All the time, all the time. And I was telling him, I was like, I remember that. And I was like, he told me I was six years old when we started going to the homeless shelter. I was like, I remember that. Because we would always play trains with them at the homeless shelter. And, like, we were always going there to, like, hang out on Saturdays. And, like, going to St. Matthias Church to, like, give the food to the people. And, like, they always made that a priority. Wow. And I'm like, I see what an impact it made on my life that I was always exposed to it. So I was always aware of that, you know? That's awesome. So people <laughs> people donate at the website. Their time wise, how, how do people get in contact you if they want to volunteer? Do they uh, call my Facebook group? Okay. So it's Community Love. It's a Facebook group. Cool. Um, and that's where we post everything: the needs, the surplus, okay. the resources. And same thing if they have if they have things that they want to donate, items, yeah, surplus, yeah. stuff. Same thing. Go to the Facebook group, yeah. and they can let yep. people know, hey, we have this. So then to get a part of the Facebook group, do they just request to be a part yeah. of it, and you yep. confirm everybody? Yeah. Okay. So, so anything that you have extra of, I guarantee I can find someone that will use it or need it okay anything in the world there's people that'll call me last week the guy was like i have tons of dress up shirts and so i contacted one of my contacts and gary and he's like actually we need dress up shirts because we're teaching the kids to practice interviewing so that they can get jobs and i'm like i told you like you send anything to me if you're like i have a pile of notebooks like i can find someone that needs notebooks and like things you wouldn't even think that anyone would use, mm-hmm. you know? That's awesome. And rather than going to <laughs> the, the big goodwills of the world, you could yeah. do it right here locally with and yeah. have lo- local people impacting, which again, goodwill yeah. serves great purpose, but to yeah. do it right with you guys. That's and Alex cool. has been a part of a lot of our events. So Alex, the go. one year, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> dressed up as Buddy the Elf, which was my absolute favorite memory. <laughs> I would do that any day of the week. I'll do it any day of the week. That was my favorite. That was that was a blast. It was so much fun because it was giving these kids like a Christmas tree member and like Alex dressed up as Buddy. We had Santa. And like I think seeing that like 
it just was cool. The like, hair coming out of the hat. <laughs> yeah. There's like a wig that came out of the hat. There, have you Can ever you seen the video of me coming in the video of it? The video is the absolute best have in you the seen, whole Yeah, you've seen that world. video. We'll clip, it's we'll clip so that. It's so great. Um, uh, congratulations. It's so great. Uh, that was a good one. The um, best coffee in the world. <laughs> the, uh, so then uh, this time of the year, what are, what are you guys working on? The, obviously, Christmas is a really big time that a lot of people are in yeah. need. Like, like we had kind of talked about winter break, kids don't go eat. home. There's yep. a lot of kids that don't eat. Yeah. There's a lot of kids that don't get the things that other kids get from Santa. Yeah. Right. Um, which, which I think is a healthy conversation to have with, for a lot of parents. Like yeah. if you're a parent listening to this, this is something. So I grew up and I want to go back to, I'll go back to what you guys are doing, but yeah. this is something that I think it's valuable talking about. When I grew up, <clears throat> My parents did everything po- we did we did not have a lot of money, but my parents would do everything possible to make Christmas awesome. So my brother and I would wake up, we'd go downstairs and you get downstairs and you'd see all these gifts and we would yeah. just be stoked, right? So the way we celebrated Christmas, I feel like is what a lot of people in Northwest Indiana how they how they do it where as a middle class family Christmas, every gift was from Santa, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'd come home and there's, you know, and on that morning it was magical, right? Yeah. The One thing, now my wife and I are Christians and our belief is, and I should say my wife has helped me with this, this viewpoint is the, the conversation we had a little bit ago, which is kids go to school and Santa brought this kid a computer and this kid literally got nothing. Parents are literally telling their kids, Santa's not coming this year because they can't like, those are real conversations and they go to school and they're like, and a six-year-old has to wonder, why would Santa get them a computer, yeah. but I didn't get anything. Santa didn't come to my house. So for me growing up, I always traditionally was like, everything came from Santa. Yeah. And I would go to school and whatever. And kids can be mean, man. Yeah. Like kids can be yeah. mean and they don't necessarily realize it, but they go to school and talk about how they got this, this, and that. And one kid might be like, Santa didn't come for me. And be like, why wouldn't Santa come for you? And yeah. then they're talking, you know, and they've yeah. got all this stuff. And this kid over here yeah. maybe isn't eating on the weekend. My wife has, has brought into to our family the, the thought that there's one gift that comes from Santa and it's usually a small gift. Yeah. It's an it's something small. It's something that is maybe five, ten, twenty bucks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But everything else comes from and in, in our family we write it, it came from like some gifts come from baby Jesus and yeah. then the rest yeah. like and then the rest come from from us. Mm-hmm. The big stuff that's expensive come from so that and, and we've watched this. I watched this with my niece and my nephew um, on her side who are extremely smart, super sweet kids. They come, they have a great life. And and watching uh, my niece who's nine now and seeing her un- start, like understanding the fact that there are kids that don't get anything yeah. on Christmas. Yep. And she got a, a coloring book from Santa. Yeah. But her parents got her yeah. an iPad, yeah. right? Yeah. There's something I think is a very practical, and at first Which I used I to think, think is great though, because then it's like it's helping the people not feel left out that Santa didn't come. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. and I, and traditionally I hated that idea at first because I was like, but dude, it's so cool to wake up and all these gifts from yeah. Santa. It doesn't have to take away from the magic, yeah. Yeah. but but from the perspective of kids go to school and they don't have the the same resources yeah. that others. I yeah. don't think that these kids need to feel like. Well, Santa doesn't love me in this, yeah. you know, or whatever yeah. it is. And and I think also it brings the magic of, hey, the, there's these two gifts came from Jesus. Yeah. This gift came from Santa and the rest came from mom and dad. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it helps kids to understand like, you know, okay, like, you know, and just having those conversations. I think, Yeah, are which important. is great. And that's the most important is like raising your kids, how you want them to see the world is like the your kids are going to change the world because of that. Mm-hmm. And that's like the absolute best thing is like you're going to raise kids that are going to change the world. Yeah. Um, so during Christmas time where I was going with this is how, what you guys usually do one big event, right? But what, what else, what are some things you're doing during Christmas and what are some things you need help with during this Christmas for community love? So we have, um, newer used toys is one of the collections and then, um, we do books. So it could be newer used books, um, because we give every kid a book because I realized like with both my parents being teachers, the importance of reading is so important. And I saw there was like a Dolly Parton, like she has a giveaway thing where like mm. you can sign up to get a free book every month mm. for the That's first four fun. years of their lives. But like wow. the importance of reading, like especially they said like, I don't know what the book is, like 60,000 words or something. Mm. Like if your kids are um, read 
it's some amount. I don't know, I even know what it is. Sixty thousand words. Like how much further ahead they'll be in life because wow. they read a X amount of words. And so the importance of giving these children that are in these unfortunate situations, like books, mm -hmm. not necessarily toys, but toys because like they deserve it too. Yeah. You know. But like books are very important, whether it's like a used book or a new book, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Just books, toys, um, food is definitely because we give them two weeks worth of food mm -hmm. um, while they're on winter break. So any non-perishables is great. Um, yeah. And, and the event, do you know when the event is yet or you're, you're figuring that yeah, out Yeah, no, week? not yet. Yeah, okay, not cool. Yet, yeah. When that comes out, yeah, we'll, yeah. We, we may even know by the time the podcast goes up Yeah. because you're going to find we'll out early next yeah. week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. So if you let us know, we can yeah. put it, you know, put it on here too. Yeah. Um, is there anything else? Did you, ha do you have any other questions? No, I mean, it's just an amazing cause. And like, I have known about community love, but I didn't know the extent of it. And it's awesome that, uh, you're doing that. Thank and, you. And I know we're, that's the thing. Like better for it. I know you Thank love, you. like, I know you have your cafe, but it's like, yeah. you, we've talked about this a lot. That my heart's in community hey, love. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. serve coffee, but yeah. it's because yeah. you get that opportunity to meet yeah. and love people. Yeah. Like your heart is definitely in community love. Yeah. You have a cafe, but it's just a, it's a, it's Vessel. a, it's a, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. These people come in and people are happy and you meet people and all of a sudden you find these people who, if yeah. someone's going to spend $5 on a cup of coffee, they may be in a situation where they're willing to help yeah. or have the ability or the funds or whatever. And you've built this network of just people that, uh, that have created what community love is with you leading yeah. the way and your vision on this and your passion for it. Like this conversation went so much better than even I expected because yeah. you can see your, you like your passion for it is oh, just coming it. out when you I talk about it. it. Yeah. Um, anything else that you want to talk about with community love, just to put out there to the two people who watch our show. <laughs> no, thanks to Noah. <laughs> no. that's, that's 121 fine. subs, dude. I, yeah. I just <laughs> think people should be involved in their community. And like, if you're choosing to live in Crown Point, you should choose to be involved. And that's like what I tell everyone, like especially business owners that have platforms to like do good and give back. Like you should invest in your community that you want to be a part of. Like you're choosing to live in Crown Point. You should choose to help the people that aren't in the same situation as you are. Mm -hmm. And even if it's just like, hey, I have an extra couple pair of pants, like, you know, and those things that you have extras of could change someone's life. Like I always say like, to you, it's just an extra thing that you have, but to somebody else, it could like completely change their life because they don't have a nice pair of pants or they don't have nice shoes. And it's just like extra stuff or games or toys or books or, mm -hmm. you know, like what a difference that can make to somebody, but to you, it's just an extra thing you have. Yeah. So. Bree, thank you. Yeah. Um, you've always, you've always been so unselfish. It's incredible. <laughs> like I, I've, it's, it's like, it's hard to, it makes sense. Like when you talk about like your parents taking you around these yeah, things, but like for as long as I've known you though, yeah. like you've always been so unselfish and you just want to love on people and help people. It's never about what's in it for Brie. Yeah. And it's never about what's in it for you or, uh, it, and I like the behind the scenes. I like people not to know it's me. That's my yeah. absolute and favorite. It, that's and that is like, out. that's yeah. like, <laughs> it's literally like, it's a superpower. That yeah. is your superpower that you that's don't, good. you don't have to have the, you don't have the ego that everybody has to, like I have, yeah. like I, I have that problem. I'm like, yeah. I, I, I struggle with like being on the backside. So it's so Yeah, but cool. see, when I met Alex, that's the one thing I said. Like the persona that he has like on like social media isn't who he is. Like I, I told Alex the first time, he's so humble and so like yeah. kind and giving and like the persona that he has, you would think that he wasn't at all, you know? Yeah. But like the first time I met him, I'm like, he's like the nicest, most humble guy that Absolutely. I've met. But like you wouldn't think that until you meet you in real life. Thank you. You know. Thank you. And I just I it's so cool being around you because you just it's just crazy how like nothing is ever about you. It's not what's in it for you. It's always what is in it for somebody else. And um, yeah, hope I mean hopefully just by talking about this, there's some more that comes through. Can yeah. We, we can get some more volunteers, yeah, some more people helping awesome. out. Um, and um, I'm just yeah, thank you for doing what you do for our community. Yeah, and thank you for having like, me. You know shopping local eating local yeah. you know supporting local like uh donating your time and your money local yeah. this is a perfect place to do that right here in our community so yeah. thank you so much thanks for coming on the show thank you very appreciate, much. appreciate you yeah. um we'll we'll link your website to okay. community love awesome. on the on the show thank you all for watching appreciate it your likes comments subscriptions we are super thankful it helps us significantly so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you guys next time